Did you know that Albert Einstein never took an IQ test? Yet he's considered one of the most brilliant minds in history. Or that a child who grows up hungry might be labeled as less intelligent just because their IQ test scores are lower. But here's the truth. IQ doesn't define intelligence. In fact, it's a deeply flawed system that ignores creativity, emotional intelligence, resilience, and real-world problem-solving. Today, we're breaking down why IQ fails, how it unfairly judges children from poor backgrounds, and what intelligence actually is. So if you've ever been told you're not smart enough, this video is for you. Fact number one, what IQ actually measures and what it doesn't. First, let's talk about what IQ really measures. IQ, or intelligence quotient, was originally designed to measure logical reasoning, memory, and problem-solving speed. But here's the catch. It doesn't account for creativity. Can you think outside the box? Emotional intelligence. Can you understand people and yourself? Practical intelligence. Can you solve real-world problems? Resilience and adaptability. Can you overcome obstacles? A person with a high IQ score may struggle in relationships, leadership, or even basic decision-making in real life. So why do we obsess over this number? Fact number two, how IQ fails people from poor or malnourished backgrounds. Here's where IQ tests become unfair. Children who grow up in poverty, especially those who experience malnutrition, often score lower on IQ tests, not because they're less intelligent, but because hunger affects brain development. Research from UNICEF shows that chronic malnutrition can lower cognitive function, reduce attention span, and slow learning speed. But here's the problem. Instead of recognizing the systemic issue, society often labels these kids as less intelligent. Think about it. How can you expect a child to perform well on an IQ test if their brain is starved of nutrients? And yet educational systems, employers, and even governments still use IQ scores to make huge decisions about people's futures. This needs to change. Fact number three, the different types of intelligence that matter. More. So if IQ isn't the best measure, what is? Enter Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, a game changer in how we understand intelligence. Gardner proposed that there are at least eight types of intelligence, including logical mathematical intelligence, what IQ tests measure. Creative intelligence, artists, musicians, designers. Practical intelligence, entrepreneurs, problem solvers. Emotional intelligence, leaders, therapists, great communicators. Kinesthetic intelligence, athletes, dancers, surgeons. Interpersonal intelligence, teachers, salespeople, politicians. Which of these really determine success in life? Hint, it's not just IQ. Fact number four how society should rethink intelligence. So, how should we look at intelligence differently? One, stop overvaluing IQ tests. They only tell a small part of the story. Two, recognize diverse talents. Intelligence comes in many forms. Three, support underprivileged kids. Instead of judging, help them get access to nutrition, education, and opportunities. Four, emphasize emotional intelligence. The ability to navigate emotions matters more than solving puzzles. 5. Encourage lifelong learning. Intelligence isn't fixed. It grows with effort and experience. And most importantly, never let a number define your potential. At the end of the day, IQ is just a tool, not a verdict on your intelligence. If you've ever felt not smart enough because of a test score, ignore it. Because intelligence is about how you adapt, learn, and grow. Einstein once said, Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it is stupid. What do you think? Do IQ tests matter or should we rethink intelligence?